prophecy, the grand old man of the forest. A long time ago, when America was still a very young country, there was a man who everyone knew as Johnny Appleseed. His hair was long and black, his eyes were blue and full of energy. His real name was John Chapman, but people didn't call him that anymore. After John was barely two years old, his mother died, and his father married another woman. John began to live with his grandmother, who had many apple trees in her garden. Little John loved to watch the pretty flowers on the trees slowly change into delicious fruit. When John was 18, he left his grandmother's home, who wanted to travel through the world. This is when his adventures began. Many people were traveling from the east toward the west at that time in search of more land. John decided to go with them. He loved traveling, discovering new places, meeting new people, and exploring new areas. But most of the travelers would soon find a clear spot and settle down. John was very upset. Oh no, he thought. I will never be able to live my whole life in one place. What should I do now? John noticed many people settling down were having a hard time farming the land that had never been cultivated before. John had an idea. Hey, what if I plant trees before the settlers get here, he thought. That way, I don't need to bother cultivating the land and I don't have to settle down. Now John was faced with a question. What type of tree should he plant? There were so many to choose from. Can you guess which tree he chose to plant in these lands? That's right. He thought of all the delicious things they could make out of apples and decided to plant trees whenever he could. And so, John would move west ahead of the travelers and find nice, fertile land. He would clear it and sow the seeds himself. He would build a fence around the trees to protect them from all wild animals. As the trees grew, John would sell them to settlers when they arrived. If any tree remained unsold, he would come back and theoretically to tend to it. When the settlers came, they were welcomed by the familiar apple trees. They could eat pies, make apple butter, and even drink cider. Before then, they were forced to eat fish and meat every day. Can you imagine eating the same thing day in and day out? John would often walk down the road with a huge sack of seeds swung over his back, sowing apple trees along the way. One day, a little boy saw him and shouted, Mom, look! Johnny Appleseed is here! He's planting more trees! The name stuck, and after that, everyone called him Johnny Appleseed. Johnny had a dream. He wished that no one in America would ever go hungry. He wanted to plant enough apple trees to feed everyone. Many poor people could not afford food. He would give them his apples and apple seeds for free. Johnny didn't have a home of his own. The earth is my home and the sky is my roof. He would say, he loved sleeping in the forest underneath the starry sky. If the weather was bad, he would ask for a shelter for a family in exchange for apple seeds. Even then, he would sleep on the floor near the fireplace. Everyone welcomed him in with open arms. On most days, he stayed out in the wild without carrying a gun or a knife. Animals are creatures of God, and they will not harm me, he would say. Johnny would eat his meals outdoors. He was a vegetarian and usually ate only fruits and nuts. Not many things could make Johnny angry, but wasting food was one thing he could not bear. If no one were to waste any food, there would be enough for everyone to eat. Johnny was also very kind to all animals. Some people said he could even understand their language. In fact, before lighting a fire, he would check out the logs for worms, ants, and other insects so he could shake them off before he burned the wood. In spite of living in the wild for most of his life, he did not once kill a single animal. One day, Johnny went to visit his friend Whitney. Whitney greeted him with a gun in his hand. 
was all set up for a hunting expedition. Johnny, what a pleasant surprise. I was just on my way to go hunting. Can you join me? It will be fun, he said. Johnny was very upset. He did not believe that man had the right to end another creature's life. After a long argument, Whitney was forced to agree, and he put his gun away. People would often say that Johnny Appleseed was quite eccentric because one could see him walking around barefoot, wearing nothing but a large sack of clothes with holes in his arm and, and his head. Instead of a hat, he wore a tin pot on his head, which he also used for cooking. One day, a farmer's wife gave him some clothes and shoes. Johnny was about to wear them when he saw a poor old man shivering on the road. A poor man, he thought to himself. He has nowhere to go. He will surely die if I leave him here like this. So Johnny gave his new clothes away to the old man. Johnny loved playing with the children. He saw that many children did not know how to read. So in every settlement he visited, he carried with him a book. He would tear the pages and distribute them among the children, teaching them how to read. Johnny was very friendly with the Native Americans. They liked him for his kind ways and the love of nature. Johnny gave them some of his saplings and taught him the healing powers of herbs and other plants. During his travels among the settlers, if he ever come across a sick child or someone in need, he would heal them. In those days, the settlers and Native Americans were at war with each other. Johnny Appleseed, though, was a friendly on both sides. Once, he heard the Native Americans were planning to attack the settlers. He ran bareheaded on barefoot for 30 miles to get the settlers' help. Johnny brought things he needed to them. Once, he brought a herd of ponies to help him carry the load of Appleseed. Suddenly, a tribe of Native Americans captured him and stole the ponies. It's okay, he thought to himself. Things happen for a reason. I'm sure they need the ponies more than I did. Once, Johnny was sitting in the field and eating when a snake tried to bite him on the foot. Legends say that his skin had become so tough from the cold and wind that the fangs from the snake could not pierce his skin. In fact, the living outdoors had made his skin so tough that he was known as amused to children by pressing hot coals or needles to the soles of their feet without feeling a thing. People say he once survived a cold, snowy night by digging a hole in the snow and using it as a shelter. One day, when Johnny was 70 years old, he knocked on the door to an old friend, William Moore. Old friend, I don't feel too well, he said. May I please take shelter here for the night? Of course you may, said William. What, what can I get you to eat? Just some milk and bread would be fine, said Johnny. After his evening meal, as per his custom, he read aloud from the Bible, curled up on the floor near the fireplace, and never woke up. The quirky old man with the tin pot on his head was never seen walking down the road again. He was missed by all. Children missed playing with him, and farmers missed his help. For 50 years of his life, Johnny roamed the wilderness planting trees. If he were to count all the trees he planted, they would come more to over 100,000 square miles. Many of these trees remain there even today. So next time you're eating an apple, think of Johnny Appleseed. It might have just come from one of those trees old Johnny planted. This book was read by Hallie Hartman.